Hello there everybody, well welcome back to Bramble Tie. Um, we are now in Le Pianti del Orto, which that is the vegetable garden. As you can see, uh, the tomatoes are growing absolutely fantastic, and especially the beef tomatoes, which Steve and I absolutely love. Um, I'm going to pick some of these today, actually, because we want to have some with our salad and our mozzarella later on. But look at these. This one's a slightly smaller one, so let's have him picked. Nice. If I can reach through rather than sort of get around, Look at this. Oh, are you going to come off or not? Are you ready? Oh, maybe she's not ready, Steve. No. Nope. Oh, yes, there we go. Look at this. This is actually quite a funny shape. I'm not sure what shape we've got of this tomato. <laughs> um, Steve, would you mind if I have a bite? If you have to, you can have your half. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. That is good. That is very, very good. We know this is my side. There's a bit of lipstick on there. I'll have another bite. Mm. That's going in the basket. That's got to be a pound of tomato, though. That is gorgeous. So, mm. by the way, that was absolutely gorgeous. The sun's been so hot. But I tell you what. That is sunshine in a tomato. Um, you might have noticed I've actually put some straw around the bottom of the tomato plants here because it has actually been so hot. Um, obviously, the, the moisture is just evaporating so quickly and the best thing would be to try and mulch a little bit. So that's why I've put the straw around the bottom of the tomato plants. So, as you can see, we don't just have the beef tomatoes here. We've also got these lovely little tomatoes. I think we'll have a few of those for our salad as well, Steve. If I bite into that, I'll probably devour the whole thing in one go. So and they're very sweet, it. those ones. These ones are very sweet. So they're going to go in the basket. Put a few more of those in the basket. And I'm thinking... Where'd you get your basket from, Lynn? Oh, gosh, yeah. You might have noticed, I do love these baskets. I did have one of these baskets um, when I did my cherry picking. And this is one of the other baskets. And you never guess where I got them from. Steve knows, so I better tell you. Um, I got it from Tams. So it came from the uh, Antica Rigatare. And for those of you perhaps who haven't watched that video, it's quite a fun video. Um, I actually visit um, what's called the Antico Rigatare, which is, it's an antique cum scrapyard. It's a real mixture. You do realise by the time we finished at Towns, we will be able to start up an Antico Rigatare it, yeah. here. I haven't just got one basket. I think I've got about four or five baskets. And every time I go, I see another basket and I think, wow, that's going to be great for something else. So I'm going to move on from these tomatoes and I'm going to, take you over to another section of tomatoes and explain about why I want you to see those tomatoes. So Steve we're just going to move on down into the next section. Uh, well as you can see we're in a slightly different area of the vegetable garden, La Pianti di Orto. If I keep saying this then I will practice my Italian. So anyway we're in a different section of the garden and you can see above my head we've got some of our olive trees and they are growing fabulous at the moment. Uh, we're hoping they're going to continue to grow the, the way that they are. Now if Steve can actually zoom in we might be able to see the olives on the tree. You might be able to see them against my hand. Look at those lovely little green olives. They are doing really well, but we're a little bit concerned about, uh, well, the fact that we've had no rain. But they are growing and they're doing really well at this moment in time. Steve's probably getting some really nice shots of those lovely little green olives. 
There's still one or two little flowers there, Steve. Look, can you see? Chitchy, chitchy flowers. Yeah, they seem to be coming on okay. Yeah, the look, only problem is will be when there's... flowers here, flower heads yeah. there. Whether they mature into olives. You can never tell. June no. and July is the, seems to be the crunch time. Well, and also we've got to be careful of the fruit fly. Returning to the Pomodore. So, a few of our Italian friends actually said, why are you growing your tomatoes underneath the olive trees? Surely that can't be right. Well, actually, if you look, these are also beef tomatoes, because as I said earlier, Steve and I like those beefy tomatoes, and they are growing really well. Because what's happening is, these olive trees are actually giving us some brilliant shade. And if you can look here, this is a one here. Look at the size. There's my fist. And look at that one. Look at how that's growing. Got a bit of a dirty hand there as well, Steve. Mm. But I suppose that shows that I'm working in the garden. So if you look, this tree, well, tree, this olive, ah, uh, sorry, this tomato plant is growing and it actually has more tomatoes on this plant than it has in the sunnier area. And that is because tomato plants need at least six hours of sun, which they're definitely getting, and they've got that little bit of shade here as well. We must be getting 12 hours of sun at the moment, Steve, would you agree? Easily. Yep. Yeah. And um, while I'm in this little section, <laughs> as I say, we're sort of covered with the uh, olive trees growing above us. Um, we're going to move on, if Steve can, to our cucumbers that's growing. We've picked a few of them. They are growing funny shapes, um, probably because of how maybe I'm watering or the, everything. But I am watering in the morning. And a wonderful person called Akanath si uh, Singh, sorry, from Trinidad and Tobago, who has helped me um, with a fly and a beetle that was on one of our plants. Um, suggested it's much much better to water in the morning water early in the morning um, because then it's much better for the plants rather than the evening when the mosquitoes and the other little insects are out we, we've got much bigger tomatoes this year oh yeah definitely they're much i yeah. know uh, it's noticeable now, you know why because got no idea. we've got the magic poo oh magic poo yeah look I mean, I'm going to touch it. I'll be washing my hands. Do you think you should hands. recap on the Look, magic poo? Yeah, we might recap on the magic poo. We've got the horse manure. Look, it's in here. It's and not I just didn't magic, it. it's Olympic poo. It was Olympic poo. And the reason I'm saying magic poo is one of the horses <laughs> um, was actually called magic. So this is supposedly magic poo. Don't worry, these hands are going to get washed later. Here we are at the cucumbers. Um, they are growing quite strange shapes, but then again, they still taste quite nice. Um, there's a nice one there growing, and there's a baby one growing nearby. They are growing up the wigwam that Steve created. Um, and for some reason, I don't know why, last year I grew the most strangest cucumbers. I think they were like an, an Asian variety. Yeah, they had fur on, didn't they? Yeah, they had a um, bit of fur on, and the, and the, the, the taste skin was, was odd. The taste was a little bit insipid. Mm. and I like my cucumber to be, you know, you can eat it straight off the plant. Um, I tried that and you couldn't do it. It was dry, it was a bit dry inside, wasn't it? It was almost like it had um, melon in it. Yeah, I think there is There is a cucumber, isn't there, with melon? It tasted something, a cross, and it, it, it's a bit like a cross ice cream to me. Sometimes <laughs> it, it does, do you know, just remember... It didn't do it for you, did it? It just reminded me of Thunderbird ice creams a long time ago when I said that. But uh, no, the idea is, is that it's the cross taste, and I'm not sure I like that. I think I just like what... You like partly, the cucumber. Partly what I know, I guess, mm. yeah. Well, while you've just been talking there, Steve, this cucumber's just come off in my hand. Not quite sure what it's going to taste like, but it's not the normal shaped cucumber. But I think it'll have quite a bit of seed inside. Why would that go like that? Probably because I gave it a bit too much water. Or that plant has just fed this little cucumber the water. That's a very strange shape. It's a strange more, shape. It's come out like a, an avocado, <laughs> for goodness sake. Avocado. <laughs> anyway, so these are my cucumbers. Um, and I'm going to take you on to see some of the other vegetables that we are growing. 
Well, as you can see, we've got um, some of the zucchini, the courgettes, in my basket. Um, but really, Steve and I like them, but we don't like them too big. So I am trying to pick them on a daily basis. Uh, we do have courgettes quite often, don't we, Steve? Well, yeah, but there's quite a few people saying that they can't grow them this year for some reason. Yeah, you're right there, although we seem to be doing quite well. And I think it's to do with, there's a mixture of things, it's to do with heat and also you can get the male and you get the female. I can never remember which one's the male and which is the female. Now, is it the male that produces the, the fruit or is it the female? You could tell me the answer if you like, that would be great. So for all those people that write in and send us those wonderful comments, which is the male and which is the female? Because I know for a fact, if we come over here to this courgette plant here, Steve, I'll just put my basket down. Look, we've got a nice courgette growing and you can see it's obviously having enough water and it's got magic poo underneath it. And then next to it, you've got a flower head here but we've got no courgette underneath. And then there's another one just here, that little flower head there, but there will be no courgette growing from that. So that is the difference. And some people, for whatever reason, are not getting their courgettes. They're just getting all the flower heads. You can do um, some nice things with the flower heads, but our courgettes are doing well. I think we have this little baby one as well. Let me just take that off. Give it a little twist. Nice. That's a nice one, look, Steve. I like that one. That's lovely. But we've been actually, we've been having, we've had courgette fritters, we've had courgettes on the barbecue, um, courgettes with onions and everything as a sort of grilled vegetable. I've also been doing courgettes, um, roasting them and then putting them in the olive oil and putting them in jars and that's been great with the salads. Um, you're not totally courgettes out yet, are you Steve? No, as long as you keep the recipes coming. <laughs> yeah, actually, the, the frittata type ones that we've been making, um, there's been several kinds and I've actually been using some of the chilies and everything. So. Maybe I should show you some of my chilies that's growing. Maybe that should be the next little section of the garden. Okay, let's go. Let's move on. The basket's getting a bit, you know, a bit more things put into it. Right. Didn't have to move too far to get to the chilies, did we? Let's look at these. Now these are green chilies at the moment, but they will turn red. As they turn red, they'll get hotter. But Look at them growing, lovely, lovely chilies. You can see the size of them. They're not huge yet, but we are still using chilies from last year that we dried. I noticed that the chilies we had last year were super hot. Oh, they were definitely hot. Um, we did invite some friends over for a meal one night, and um, I think you sort of gave him one to try, and he went, oh yeah, I love chilies. I think he got a bit of a shock with our chilies, didn't he? So, I'm going to pick one of these chilies to go with um, our meal today, but that's the little chilli there. So, next things. I want to mention, on our very, very first raised garden video that we did, we mentioned about what would you suggest that we could put around our fencing. And now it's not that we haven't done it, because we definitely haven't done it, but you might also have realised that we extended our raised garden because this is all the new wood and this is the old wood on the opposite side. So we actually created, Steve built for me, three more raised beds. So actually now we have to move the fence out a metre. So it was no good putting any plants and everything around it and we still haven't really made a proper decision as to which ones we're going to use. Well you didn't know what you wanted in this space, the space no. was left over to see if we could utilise it for growing and in the end we decided to do that and 
obviously that fence uh, to get around the other side of the box is just a little bit difficult to walk around so I'll move the fence over a meter it's not that it's not that much of a problem um, we've got the space to do it so gonna, we might as well do move it. it out sort of so basically it'll be in line with that tree yeah we'll give the olive tree a tiny little uh, prune so you can walk through but basically the size uh, down there will be um, I can just squeeze down this side at the moment can't I yeah no it's too tight to get down there at the moment um, so if we can get you know upwards of half a meter plus there that would be nice and, and I think also you know um, our priority here is we're building we're building bramble tie our farmhouse that we want to um, you know live in eventually and obviously every little thing that we do takes our time up and we've got to be you know we've got to be careful of that that we don't get too involved in certain things but the other thing that really we want to show you and Steve took some great footage um, was the lavender we've had so many visitors to this garden because of the lavender bush yeah, it's been overwhelming uh, from, I mean, it's full. Every time I come in here, it's full of insects. And presumably the bees, I mean, it was full of bees this morning and presumably that's a good thing. Yeah, the bees are still there, Steve, but we've also had some fabulous looking butterflies. We've had the swallow tail butterfly, uh, which I'd never, ever seen before. Um, I believe it's actually common in Abruzzo, but it's actually quite rare in the UK. Um, unfortunately, the, the butterflies aren't here at the moment, but we've got the bees, you can see the bees. And the other thing that we had was those wonderful little moths with had like, and they were sort of just taking the nectar from the, the lavender. Well, the lavender's now starting to go off, so I shall be collecting some of this and making some little bags. But um, you've got some great footage of some of this yeah. with the butterflies, and I'm sure we're going to show you that. I don't know if you watched the pruning uh, video that we did, and Steve had that wonderful big display of all the special tools he had uh, for, you know, pruning the olive trees. Well, my tool selection is not quite like Steve's. I've got the hat. I've got several pairs of gloves. You might quite like my long glove. This is for when I'm dealing with certain aspects of things, but I've got the long glove. Anyway. Moving on down, you can see I've got a couple of pairs of pruners, which we actually did use for the pruning of the olive trees. So what are they called in Ita Italian? Oh my goodness, I'll have to find out. That's a hard word. I bet this is going to be a funny word. Something tagliere. Tali well, yeah, because tagliere is to sort of cut the hair, isn't it? Well, no, it's to cut. Cut, oh well, not just cut the hair, no. just cut. Okay. Um, obviously... This was quite a nice one, stainless steel one. These are a bit cheap, but this is quite good. You can see I've used my dibber quite a bit. There's probably quite a funny little word for dibber as well, I would have thought. Wouldn't even hazard to guess. No, <laughs> I don't think. Um, okay, two glasses of water that doesn't really come under the gardening selection, but we do have to keep ourselves dehydrated. So, There's only something wrong with that. What, with the water? No, no wine. Oh yeah, that's true. We often have wine. Tea, coffee, anything else. Okay, now, I've also got these. I love this. I really do love. It's a bit like a mahaka, right? This is great. Yeah, Lynn said no birthday presents with a plug on it, so that's what she got yeah, instead. Yeah, I've got one of these. But I've also got, and I haven't put them on display, I've got two of these. But they're really big, like the old men, you know, on the ground, like this. And I've got one with a hook on the end. But they're good. And in fact, I put these in my suitcase when I came back from the UK the last time. Some nice little choppers. A little squirty bottle for when I have to, you know, just check on some of those little insects. Put a little bit of fairy liquid in with some water. Standardised watering pan. Someone was very concerned about me kneeling on this surface. So I have just got a little bit of polystyrene type board not polystyrene what is it what's it made of like rubber yeah and um, obviously the old-fashioned actually it's probably vintage this now old-fashioned cake come biscuit tin probably from Marks and Spencer's at one point 
full of all my seeds. And then below, you might not be able to catch it, but I've got my ties, I've got spare gloves, um, I've even got the mosquito things there. So that just gives you a little indication of some of the tools Lynn uses for the garden. But the most important tool is these. And Steve. <laughs> and Steve. Oh gosh, yes. You've got to remember, I just do the little labouring bit and the man behind the camera has got those muscles. <laughs> Now we're in sort of the herb section of the garden. We've got two of these boxes with our herbs and this rosemary bush was just a small little rosemary bush when we planted it and it has really taken off. We do cut it back when it gets a bit too woody and then obviously we've got our other herbs around. Mint grows like crazy. Basil at the moment's doing well and also our parsley is still surviving, although I have heard that some people's parsley is drying out and not doing so good. So today, I don't know what salad we're going to have, but we'll definitely be having some tomatoes, some pomodori. We have some basilica. I'm going to pick a little bit of that. Some nice bits of basil. I did make a fabulous, oh, that's what I did with the courgettes, I forgot to mention. I did a pesto sauce and it was made with courgettes and basil. Gosh, it did taste good. That was sort of a, a success, wasn't it, Steve? Mm-hmm. Maybe next time I make it, I'll have to take some pictures to show you. Um, and what I can say to you all is, thank you very much for all the comments that you've been sending us. We've had some fabulous comments. Um, really, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we'd love you to join us and join us on our adventure. Um, maybe see a little bit more of Button, see what Steve's been up to in the house. Um, one of our videos has just come out and he's been really working hard on that. If you like what you see, please tick the like because it helps us and it helps us grow the channel. Um, we love you to be with us. And from me, Lynn, and from me, Steve, and from Miss Button. I don't know whether Steve can scan around and see her. She's quite happy at the moment. She's very happy. She's asleep yet again, lying on the matting. Oh, can I just mention, there's a lot of the American people who have been writing to me on Facebook. They wanted to know what this matting was, Steve, this. I don't know the name for it, it's just a green matting and it's literally, it just prevents the weeds but coming it's not, through. But it's not a blackout. No, it's definitely not a blackout. It's the kind of thing they actually, I think I've adapted it, I think they use it to put along the side of fencing to block out certain things. Right. Um, it comes in one metre, two metre and four metre width, doesn't it? Mm. And then obviously you've pegged it down, but this has been down for over a year. Oh and gosh, it yeah. It's really, it's doing the job for us at the moment. We mentioned about putting shingle down. Uh, shingle probably not going to work quite yet because as you can see at the moment, I can just brush this up. These are just well, dry leaves. Kind of one of those non-essential jobs where we've got a lot it, of other things to exactly. do. Exactly. Exactly.